Today we're going to be looking at another one of Kurtzgazat's videos. Specifically this one here called Ancient Life as Old as the Universe. In case you don't know me, I'm Tyler Fultz. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's get right into it. The 12,024 calendar is here. Get it now before it sells out. And stay tuned until the end of this video for a sneak peek that's out of this world. Life has existed on one planet for about 4 billion years, as far as we know. But it might have started right after the Big Bang, when the universe was much stranger and more fantastic than today. A universe that might have allowed life to develop absolutely anywhere. The cosmos might be full of the seeds of life, sleeping in a dead desert, waiting for a few drops of rain to explosively bloom and grow. That's just a fascinating kind, uh, because again, when he mentioned 4 billion on Earth, a lot of that was single-celled life. Even multicellular life didn't come around until much more recently. And the idea that something could exist back when the fundamental laws of physics were different, that's fascinating. Tiny and not so tiny aliens might be everywhere. In this video, we're going to put together two highly speculative yet scientifically grounded possibilities. Hmm. Check out the scientific papers in our sources. To properly explain it, let's first look at the paradox of life on Earth. The life paradox. For its first few hundred million years, Earth was a magma hell, constantly bombarded by asteroids. But basically the second thing's appropriately named because that was called the Hadean Eon. Down and the first oceans formed, life just appeared and zillions of microbes settled every <laughs> nook and cranny they found. This is kind of strange. Life on Earth seems to be almost as old as the planet itself, as if it was waiting around for an opportunity. But life didn't only appear extremely quickly. In that tiny time window, it also crossed a huge gap. To qualify as living things, even it's microbes so need to eat, poop, grow, and <laughs> multiply. To do that, they need a genome, the biological instruction manual that sets the inner workings of an organism. How dead things with no genome become living things with genomes is one of the biggest riddles of science. Simplifying a lot, the problem is that to have a functioning genome, you need proteins. And to make those proteins, you need a functioning genome. Both hmm. proteins and genomes are super long molecules made of pretty complex blocks that are extremely difficult to assemble by chance. It's a chicken egg paradox with several chickens and eggs. Once you have a finished cell, the whole system works efficiently. It can be kind of a vicious cycle having chicken and egg paradoxes where you're not sure what the cause is and what the effect is, such as whether or not to build nuclear power plants. There are doubts about how long it takes to build them that are creating actual barriers that it takes to build. And to get around that, well, you just need to go for it. Because then, yes, it's going to take longer the first few times we build it because it hasn't since it's been so long, at least within the U.S., that we've built the nuclear power plants. Vogel 3 and 4 are a perfect example of us just going for it. But we keep doing, we get better at it, and then we can build them more quickly, more efficiently, without compromising safety. Stop the vicious cycle. Just go for it. <laughs> but starting from simple dead stuff and reaching that level of sophistication by pure chance should require an amazing amount of time for trial and error. So how did the first living things manage to cross that gap in just a few hundred million years? Mo I, I kind of see that the gap between dead to living is much shorter than the gap between living unicellular life forms to multicellular life forms, which was many more billions of years. <laughs> theories about the origin of life try to explain that gap by theorizing how some primitive soup of prebiotic molecules could have efficiently primitive produced soup. the first self-replicating entities. But we still don't know how exactly this would have worked. Maybe we need to think backwards. The Clock of Evolution Think of genomes <laughs> as a book telling the history of life. As time passed and life evolved, more characters were introduced. Amoeba, fish, amphibians, dinosaurs, and mammals. 
Over billions of years, the story of life got more and more complex. A genome can be viewed as a long string of letters with biological instructions. And from microbes to us today, functional genomes seem to have been increasing in size at a fairly constant rate. The functional genome of fish is more than twice that of worms. Our functional genome is about twice bigger than that of fish, and so on. It is a bit more complicated, but for now, let's... I would have thought it would have been more complicated than that. Maybe they're just talking about length and there is other further, further details about it that they're leaving out. This. <laughs> when we put all these clues together, it seems that genomes have been doubling in size on average every 350 million years or so. As if evolution had been following an exponential inner clock. But it gets even stranger. The very first microbes that emerged on Earth, even if they look simple, already seem to have had pretty long and complex genomes. Hmm. But how could life have achieved that level of complexity in such a short time? There may be an interesting way to solve this riddle. We just take our exponential clock and extrapolate it back in time to the simplest conceivable life form. Something equivalent to a being with a genome containing just a few letters. But if we do that, we end up 10 billion years in the past. More than twice the age of Earth, which means if life actually evolved like this, it didn't start here, but somewhere out there, in space. This would explain why life started to thrive so quickly on our young planet. Interesting idea. Not sure how... I guess it could be perfectly preserved somehow. I mean, that same logic is why stuff like uranium exists on Earth naturally. It didn't come from Earth. The only way to get stuff like that is to have stars go supernova or collide into each other with a kilonova because stars, stardust by itself, you're not going to create anything bigger than iron but via nuclear fusion. So big explosions and accumulation, sure. And it hitting the primordial Earth early on. Why couldn't life forms do that? If it was already present in space like a seed, it just needed water and warm temperatures to wake up and go on evolving. And it would also explain the high degree of sophistication of the first life forms on Earth. They could have been complex already because they might have been evolving for billions of years somewhere else in the universe. But could life really be that old? Not sure about them evolving on an asteroid, but <laughs> sure. Maybe, yes. Actually, life could have started shortly after the universe itself was born. A Goldilocks baby universe. At its most basic level, life needs two things. The right chemical elements to form complex molecules and a liquid medium, like water, in which those molecules can move and interact. The liquid medium needs to stay warm enough to remain, well, liquid. So when we search for life in space, we focus on Earth-like planets at just the right, right distance from their star, warm enough to sustain liquid water. But there was actually a time when almost all of the universe might have been habitable. Right after the Big Bang, the universe was extremely hot. But as the cosmos expanded, it cooled. And between about 10 and 17 million years after the Big Bang, when the universe was a thousand times younger than today, it was between 100 degrees Celsius and zero degrees Celsius the temperature at which water is liquid. So for this window of time, more than 13.7 billion years ago, the whole universe, absolutely every inch of it, had the right temperature to support life. Question is, how long did it stay at that temperature, though? If it takes several million years for it to evolve properly, because big difference between 10 million years after the Big Bang and during the Big Bang and for the first few million years, way too hot. After that, it's going to it's gonna cool off. So would it really be long enough to develop life, at least by itself? I'm not so sure. Of course, the right temperature alone is not enough for life. We also need chemical elements like carbon and oxygen, which are forged in the cores of stars. But were there stars in super early cosmic times? Maybe, yes, in regions of the universe where matter was especially dense such stars would have been very massive and gone supernova in just three million years. Remember they did another video on these, these uh, quasi stars or black hole stars? I'll pin a comment below where, for my reaction to that. That one's a fascinating thing. Involves black holes versus nuclear fusion. 
seeding the baby universe with the chemical elements needed to form dust, asteroids, planets, and the ingredients of life. Hmm. Maybe the first ancestors of life were more exotic and didn't even need water, but thrived in substances like ammonia or ethane that can stay liquid at temperatures really? far below zero degrees Celsius. Hmm. They could have been sustained by the lingering warmth of the Big Bang for tens of millions of years longer, well into a time when we know for sure there were stars and all the chemical elements. The real magic of this... On that note, so let's say life did develop, okay? Then life, since it existed when the universe was small, it could have the ability to expand outward and we actually see a good bit more life, but maybe the odds of it hanging on to that is relatively less common, which is why we're just seeing it here on Earth. I, I don't know, though. You'd think if that was the thing, life would be more common throughout the universe, but there's so much of the universe we have let, yet to explore. It's all fascinating stuff, by the way. It's a, it's a cool idea. Dear, ...is that while the universe today is extremely deadly and hostile, back then, the conditions for life might have been basically everywhere. For a period that may have lasted several dozen million years, primordial life might have been able to emerge on any rock, even between the stars. So I like that light. So I like that Kurtzgazat uses the green glow associated with a lot of stuff now. So now it's associated with life, and earlier it was associated with uranium radioactive material. Of course, life, life forms, including people, are a little radioactive, but that's not from it being life. That's from some of the elements such as uh, potassium-40 that exists in our bodies. I still love it, though. Beautiful animation. The universe with the seeds of what, billions of years later, would become bacteria, trilobites, dinosaurs, and finally us. At some point, the universe cooled down below the right temperature for life <laughs> to cold. thrive, but some of those ancestral life forms may have continued to exist in the internal warmth of the first planets, frozen in asteroids or hibernating in cosmic dust. Tiny seeds roaming the cosmos, waiting for new hospitable places to continue evolving. If they did, life now might be everywhere in the universe. One way to test that is if we find some ancient planets that are billions of years older than Earth. Because Earth is, there's a big gap between formation of the solar system and formation of the universe. Will we ever know? <laughs> All this makes for a nice story. And while both the habitability of the baby universe and our exponential clock of life are reasonable ideas, they're still speculative. One thing, just to be fair, any sort of extrapolation associated with exponential functions, especially when you're going backwards, huge margins of error, just, just in general. One more possibility among many others, trying to explain our existence today. But if life came to Earth from outer space, then it should have seeded other places in the solar system yep. too. Maybe there are fossils in dry riverbeds on Mars. Maybe we'll soon find life in the warm underground oceans of Enceladus or Europa. Titan has seas, rivers and lakes of ethane and methane as warm as the universe when it was 90 million years old. So finding exotic life on Titan would support the idea that life could have originated in the weird baby universe. So far, it's when we look out into the cosmos, we don't see anyone like us. But maybe that's because life needed 10 billion years or more to reach the level of complexity that allows for a technological species. Maybe Green glow signals that can cause life to evolve. How about that? There are millions of worlds filled with microbes, oceans full of exotic fish, and continents of bizarre animals. And maybe even others like us that just recently gained consciousness and are beginning to look at the sky, wondering <laughs> if they're alone. Those are cute. Life could be flourishing right now in uncountable forms and in all kinds of cosmic environments. And if many of us share a common cosmic origin, we would all be part of a great cosmic family. The answer may lie in our cosmic backyard. Let's go and find out. Because it's green, it's possibly a nuclear family. That's a fascinating idea, and not one that I've ever really thought of, but that is a point that just by using the simple application of the mean value theorem, universe being insanely hot to where it is now being super cold, 
that yeah, there was a moment in time where it was at the right temperature to support life. Of course, I'm not sure how many planets and solar systems existed back then for life to actually evolve and thrive on. So I'm I'm skeptical on this one, but it's a really it's a really really cool idea and. <laughs> I love Kurt Skazat's storytelling and animations to explain this, as always. What do you think? I think it would be cool. I'd like to, s to find some ancient planets and be one way to figure that out, one way or the other. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.